Okay, I promised a video on some work that I've done with the Nagra SNN. And I uh, wanted to show you some of the cables that I created to buy the interface. There's an interface that's available for this to switch between record and play. I'll put a picture of it up here. They're pretty expensive and they're very hard to find. And um, so instead of going that route, I just use the uh, schematics that are available online and uh, have been looking at these, this input socket and the remote and pilot socket on the tape recorder, the input socket and the remote and pilot socket. And it's also external power. You can insert internal ex external power on here as well. But um, the uh, input socket has basically three options available. You can uh, create a line input according to the schematic here, a line input, and which uses one, two, three, four of the six pins on the device uses four of the six pins. This is a um, anchor hole, so your microphone has a anchor screw, so you pop that in place like that, and then tighten it up, and it holds it in place. And that's why I have that screw on my um, line input device, so I can uh, hold it in place. In any, in any case, um, the line input attenuator that uh, I showed you in a previous video has three components. It has this 100 ohm resistor that ties pins three, two and three, two and three, up to pin six, And so these two pins come up here to pin six. And then the um, pins two and three have to be tied together. Right here, you see that? Pins two and three have to be tied together in order to turn on the record function. So when you have one of these line or microphone cords plugged into the device, it's going to record and it'll record over whatever you got on your tape. And uh, the only way to get around that is to either switch this connection with some kind of wiring or just unplug the input device. So that's the first one, the line input. And then you have two microphone inputs. You've got a what they call the Nagra static or the Nagra static, Nagra static. You know, a static made a microphone a uh, a uh, condenser microphone and they use the 50 volt line right here see that 50 volt line and it goes in and powers the mic and then the other connections are the regular microphone connections up here or it can use a dynamic microphone and uh, a crystal microphone would be ultra sensitive but a dynamic microphone that doesn't use external power and it uh, plugs into this input connector as well, this input socket. So those are the three inputs that you can use. And I think I showed you, but I'll show it to you now since it's a separate video. The, uh, th the components here are found in this. I 3D printed this, designed this, and 3D printed this little container to hold the pins. These are one millimeter header pins that you can get any headers like you use on Arduino and all those. I just pulled those header pins out. Get a little more light on the subject in here. And you can see 
the header pins there. There's pins two and three shorted together, as we saw on the schematic here. And then I've got the input capacitor, the uh, coupling capacitor, and the limiting resistor. And we'll talk about this in just a second, how we know what values to use. So that's really all there is to it. It was a little bit difficult, cantankerous, getting all that in to the little connector. And then I just printed a little cover for it. And this will screw all the way in and hold it in place when you're um, plugging it into the Nagra. If you're interested, I can, I can uh, email you the STL files to 3D print that. So that's the line input attenuator right here. I designed, I, I uh, selected the 820 ohm and 4.7 microfarad capacitor for my setup because I was going to try to hit the middle here. 4.4 volts RMS input is a pretty hot signal. That's speaker level uh, signals. And then this is a headphone level and then this is a really low line level signal so these are voltages 0.75 or 0.77 volts rms 1.5 volts rms and 4.4 volts rms so you would use depending on your application so if you're coming out of a, a headphone device like i did with the uh, the iphone i just decided to use the uh, hit the middle here and select this 1.55 option uh, I just tested the um, output, headphone output of this, and I'm getting about 300 to 400 um, millivolts, peak to peak, and that would be, what, uh, 75 to 80 RMS. So I'm, I'm probably would be able to be able to use this setup for the in line, in line input attenuator. But there may be some output devices like an old tape recorder that I want to send a signal into the Nagra. And it will be up in this neighborhood. So I split the difference. But that's what that's all about. These values right here sub are substituted here. Does that make sense? Okay. And the microphones are very pretty obvious. All right. So what's this playback setting right here? Well, this is something that I discovered on the playback amplifier. And you remember we saw, we plugged the headphones, they call them phones here. We plugged the headphones into the phone jack right there, the 1.1K ohm phone jack. And I go straight into, um, with, if you plug these into a set of headphones that have one point or 1,000 ohm impedance, you can listen with headphones. But a lot of headphones are 600 ohms or lower, and so it really loaded up this playback amplifier. When I tried to plug in regular headphones into the Nagra, this amplifier just couldn't handle it, and it wouldn't produce audio. Might be just the way it's designed, so I needed a 1,000 ohm load to be seen on this connector right here. This connector is this connector right here, right here. So what I did was, is I took uh, a regular mono plug on one end, it's a regular mono jack. And on the, the plug, the end that I'm gonna plug into the Nagra, I, added these components according to the instructions here. And you notice it needs a 4.7 coupling capacitor and a 1K ohm resistor across the input and ground of this connector. So that's really all there is to it. You, so the resistor, you can see it there. That's a 1K ohm resistor. And so it sees a 1K ohm load right here on the playback amplifier, and it works perfectly. And then I've got that coupling capacitor um, right here to prevent any DC 
from entering or exiting this circuit and creating a problem for the input device. So that's the cable that you would need to be able to use something other than just a 1K ohm impedance headphone. So that's the patch cable that I've created. And when I plug that into the Nagra, and then I can come into my little vintage Radio Shack amplifier that I have here, this little mini speaker, but it, it could go directly into a um, another amplifier of some kind. But I just plug it into this little Radio Shack speaker with a jumper cable. Somewhere here I've got a jumper cable. Oh, here it is. And uh, so I just take the Nagra right into the amplifier. And that's how it works. Let me turn it on here. And we'll, I don't know what we've got on this tape. Okay. So we got a little bit of music there. Okay, so let's, now, then what I did was I found a little better quality speaker uh, that I had in the shop here, a little heavier duty, bigger magnet, a little bit more uh, dynamic range, and I plug it into the external speaker connector on the little amplifier, and so now I can listen. So a little better dynamic range. So that's how that works using this special cable. Let's see. Um, so we've illustrated the line in in the previous video. And when we plug this in, remember, pins two and three are shorted or jumped. And so when we jump those two pins, two and three, uh, we'll get over here to the line one. If we jump pins two and three here, it goes into record mode. And so anytime this is plugged in, the Nagra will record. Okay. One of the other interesting things with more advanced tape recorders is that in, in larger tape recorders, and let me bring one over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. With larger tape recorders, this is a Nagra D4. The DJ means DJ model number means that it doesn't have microphone inputs. So I had to get an external microphone interface for this tape recorder. But on larger tape recorders of, of any quality, you will have a line and phones connection. You'll either do a tape listening to the audio that you're pumping in in record mode directly. So it will be like listening to... Uh, let me see if I can explain this uh, without stumbling here. If I had a splitter and one wire came out and went into the tape recorder and one wire went out to the speaker, I could listen to the music that I'm recording into the tape, tape player. And I would uh, have no idea how the tape recorder um what's going on inside the tape recorder would have no idea if I'm overdriving the tape recorder because what I'm listening to is the source, the source. But if I could take a single line out of my source music, plug it into the tape recorder and record from the record head, here's the erase head and the record head, and then immediately listen to the source by by slipping flipping the instead of direct slipping the to the tape now i'm listening here listening to what's just been put on the tape so from this point recording to now listening to it immediately after or almost you know uh, a few milliseconds after it's been recorded i'm now listening to it on the tape this gives me a genuine idea of what's actually being put down on the tape. And that's called the tape monitor, tape monitor. This device is designed that way. This device is designed to erase the, the track, 
record the track and then immediately play it. Whether you're recording or not, when you are recording, this playhead is always active and always listening. So when I plug, so this playhead is connected to these phone, this phone jack. So when I'm playing, when this tape is moving, not rewinding, but when it's moving forward in the tape deck, this playhead is listening and it's going to send whatever it hears directly out to the phones. So when I plug the speaker system I've got here into this phone jack and I plug, I plug my microphone or I plug my line input into this and go into record mode, I can listen instantly or nearly so. It's recording here and listening here. I can tell exactly what's going down onto the tape. And that's just a, a very common recording uh, function or feature of a little more advanced tape recorders. All the, the good reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders have that functionality. and But you won't find that in the cheaper tape decks um, because it's it's a more advanced function and, and feature. But the, the Nagra SN is designed to always listen on the playback head. It doesn't have a switchable control to listen to the tape or direct, in this case, listening to my iPhone or listening to the tape monitor. So that's the, the monitoring function. function. So it, it's a very helpful tool because, you know, you can be listening to your recording with your headphones with a microphone somewhere in the room and you can have your headphones on and you can tell whether it's too loud or not loud enough and then you can adjust the compression of the the gain and the compression right here on the ALC and uh, get rid of the clipping or whatever happens to be occurring on your recording. We already looked at the high speed and low speed settings and I wanted you to see, let me see if I can pop this tape off carefully and almost dropped it there. And you can see the different time markers. Um, I'm really not certain. Maybe somebody can tell me why they included a 15 sixteenths setting. That is an actual setting for speed, but not with Nagra. As you'll remember, we looked at the the different tape speeds on the Nagra tapes here, and they don't even include the 15 sixteenths speed. So I'm really not sure what that is a reflection, what that reflects in terms of the speed of the tape recorder. Maybe somebody can tell me why Nagra included this scale. But at one and seven eighths, you can see how much time has been recorded on the tape. And on three and three quarters, how much time has, has been recorded on the tape. So um, that's what these scales do. And they're just a rough, I'd give you a rough idea Another interesting thing that I want to show you a video clip of is that I recorded a, a video of some of these tapes using some of these uh, bonus tapes, I'll call them. And I noticed the re recording was very poor. And then I quickly discovered, I began to, to notice that the oxide coating, and I'm going to come in here and look a little closer and we'll zoom in on this tape right here draped across my fingers that dull finish is the oxide coating on the vinyl or plastic or whatever this tape material is made of and that's what uh, the magnetic particles are bound to in that oxide coating well I noticed that the tape that I was using you could see it was real granular looking on the tape. And when you see the, the video, you'll see it, clearly see it, and how it affects the sound and the recording. And it clogged up the heads and got all over the pinch roller and all over the capstan. And these guides were all dirty. And you'll see that in the clip. So it makes a difference, the quality of the tape that you're using, the age of the tape, the storage and all of that of the tape will make a difference 
on the uh, the recording quality and also the maintenance of your of the tape recorder. I do a lot of videos, and you probably have had a chance to see some of them of the cheaper videos are of the cheaper tape recorders that I've done. The little plastic Japanese models um, and some American made models. And I've had mixed results of recording. Particularly it's noticeable with music because it's such a demand on the fidelity of the tape recorder to produce and reproduce the music. And I've discovered that if I have a good quality tape and sometimes that's not easy to, to, to detect, that the recording quality significantly improved, and which would make sense, of course. So I'm going to illustrate that with a couple of video clips here and let you see. I sent my son an earlier clip, and so I may refer to him in the video, and that's what that's all about. All right, I want you to see the... the oxide buildup on the tape here. You see that? And what it will do to the audio quality. Let's push play here and um, listen to the audio. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. Clearly, the audio quality is impacted by the oxide coating coming off the tape. So I'm going to do another recording with a different tape. Before I do that, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here on the uh, tape deck. Clean these heads. Look at that. These were just cleaned right before that last recording. And look at this. So all of that is coming off of those other tapes. And um, you can see all the stuff coming off the pinch roller and capstan and all the guides. So I'm going to try this again now and um, see if we get any better quality recording. Okay, let's listen to what it sounds like on the other tape without all the crud on the tape. You can look. Let me zoom in here and I'll play it while we're looking at that. So there you have it, the Nagra 4 D J D J, and the Nagra SNN. Can you imagine? This is designed to also be abused in the field and not affect the wow and flutter of the tape recorder, but they have duplicated that technology in this tiny little form factor, and it has really... It's been a, a, a lot of fun to, uh, to tinker with, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.